All right, we are here today showing off the new Freeling Racing iFlash setup that works on the Ford Raptor uh, EcoBoost engine. With the Freeling tool, we're able to read and write the ECU. So it's a brand new tool that allows you to flash your vehicle. Um, this is not a tuning software, but a communication device. So this is sold for tuners in a master tool or to uh, customers as an end user where a tuner would provide them with the cable and a tune that is encrypted. So we're gonna show you how the Freeling Racing tool works here for the Ford Raptor and uh, go through the, the steps to make it work. So let's check it out. So with all the Freeling tools, you have the iFlash. The iFlash is a PC driven uh, application that you launch and you go through the prompts to then communicate to the car. So we've got the Ford iFlash launched as well as our cable plugged into the OBD2 port. So our first step in anything is to turn the ignition to the on position. Now you don't want to start the car, you just want to turn it so all the lights are on the dash. With the ignition on, we're going to go through the prompts here. So the first step is here after we launch the application is to go through the prompts. This then uh, makes sure the power in the computer is good and the cable is connected to the port without any interruptions. So you can see here it does a uh, speed test, uh, make sure the hardware is there. And then it'll bring up the screen here that is typical. It says was not able to identify the ECU type, which is normal for many of the iFlashes. Um, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna select the ECU type for the Raptor. And this one's actually going to be the Bosch MG1 TC277, um, which is a variant of, uh, I believe, the MED717. Um, it's an MEDG17 that the Raptor uses. So once we select this, it asks us if, uh, if we know better. On a end user cable, it will then lock to the device. But since this is the master cable, um, it's open, can read write as many times as we need. So you can see the VIN numbers there, we hit next. Now we're at the screen which allows us to read, program, recover, diagnostics, and software options. Software options are for things such as um, not calculating checksums, which you don't want to use. Some uh, iFlashes, you have the ability to force write, force read. Uh, we're not interested in this. Um, diagnostics is sometimes used to read codes. Um, not every iFlash will use the diagnostics. So what we want to do is read the ECU. Now the Ford is set up to program the calibration data only. So we can read the full program as well as the calibration data. It's not a bad thing to read both. In this case for, um, for the example, we'll just read the calibration data. And this is what you'll do the tuning on once done. So calibration data, we'll hit OK. We'll go ahead and save that file. We've already done this, so we're just going to replace it. So now we turn the ignition off and then on. It's a sequence. So it is now off. We'll turn the ignition back on. And then we'll continue here. So now the iFlash will go through the process of connecting to the ECU to read out the information in the um, data area, which I believe is uh, 468k. Uh, once that's done, you then have the, with the master tool, the decrypted binary file to make your tune from. Um, if this is a end user cable, you then email this file to your tuner in which they'll decrypt it, make you a tune, and then send you back a encrypted file for you to flash. So we'll watch this process go through here, which takes about three minutes. All right, we're still going through the read process. Um, we are past the 50% mark. Uh, so again, it's pretty uh, pretty quick on the read, reading the data, era, data area only. Um, and once finished, it will then ask us if we'd like to open and view, uh, which we don't need to. And then we will demonstrate how to flash the file back to the vehicle. All right, just a couple seconds left here, and then the read is complete. And we'll show you what happens now. So the read is done. We can now turn the vehicle off. And we no longer need to have the cable plugged in um, for anything. 
With the master tool, we would now open the file in something like WinOLS, or if you use DimSport Alien Tech, their editing software. Um, if you are a customer with an end user, you would simply now email the file to your tuner in which they would then take care of the tune. So now we'll show you how to flash the new file, or in this case, we'll flash the existing read back to the vehicle. All right, so now we're gonna show you how to flash the file back to the vehicle. So we're gonna launch the iFlash and go through the prompts. You wanna make sure the ignition is in the on position with all the lights on the dash. Um, we'll go through here, it'll connect, testing hardware, and we will select the ECU again. Um, if you've already done this with a end user cable, you'll only see this ECU type. And we'll go ahead and hit next. And with a tune file, you will do program ECU memory. Um, because we're flashing back the read that we just did, we're gonna do recover ECU memory. So when you flash the original file, recover, and when you program a tune, you do program. So recover ECU memory. Um, and though we can read out the full file as well as the data area, we can only flash the data area. And this is the um, 768 kilobytes. So I have to correct myself from earlier, it's 768 kilobytes. So we're gonna select that. Um, it's gonna give us a little bit of a blurb about the uh, original file flashing and we're gonna agree to this and go through the ignition on and off sequence again. Ignition is off, ignition is back on, we will hit OK, and now we're going through the programming part here. You can see it downloading bootloader, and as soon as that's done, it will start the writing process. And much like the read process, the write's extremely fast, it's actually quicker. Going through the program, and you'll see it says two minutes, one minute, but it's going to finish up here in probably 20 seconds or less. So that's done, tells us to turn the ignition off. So we'll go ahead and turn that off and hit the ignition off button, uh, which will do a countdown. And once that is complete, it'll say the ECU has been successfully flashed. And of course, the final test is to start the vehicle and make sure everything starts correctly. All right, so the ECU has been programmed. Now we're gonna start the vehicle and make sure everything goes. And of course, if it starts, the checksums are all good. The ECU has been programmed and you are done. So let's fire it up. So you can see there, everything started up, no lights, no issues, even though it was a read-write, same file. Of course, uh, when programming or um, making a tuned file, that is in the tuner's hand. But you can see that the hardware uh, works very well, very fast, and is a great solution to programming your Ford Raptor or ECU. Um, this allows a customer to be able to flash between tuned and stock without any issues dealing with dealers. And of course, you could have multiple files if you needed to. You just store them on a, um, a laptop or a tablet, Windows-based, so you can then flash between them um, pretty simply, very quick. So that's how the free lean racing iFlash works for the Ford Raptor. Uh, yeah. If you have any questions, leave us a comment. Uh, you can check out more on freelean-group.com. You can see more of our own tuning options on vrtune.com. And you can also leave us any types of emails you want, questions, questions about this product, tunes, anything, and we'll be happy to help you out. So thanks, and we will see you at the next one.